Welcome back, folks. It's Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are still sideways, uh, most of the market for the day at least, uh, trading at 5,111 in the ES Mini, 1986 in the Russell, 17,934 in the NQ, about 0.31%. And then gold, we are up 1.2%. 12% at 2,410 roughly. Take a look over here. This is the Ord-Oracle.com. Now, Tim Ord is a regular guest on the Tom O'Brien Show. We have all uh, come to really love his analysis. Um, and Tim Ord, we also have a few of his webinars, uh, his archives on TFNN.com under the services tab. Strongly recommend checking those out. That is a uh, great source of information, especially if you're working on becoming uh, a technician yourself. I believe we have Tim on the line right now. Tim, are you there? Yep, I'm here. So, uh, what do we got? Actually, uh, well, actually, right now uh, we can look at gold, but really the thing to look at right now, I think, is actually the market. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, I can kind of, I don't know where to, we, we can. Um, well, actually, okay, in a nutshell, I did go long on Friday, and the reason why I did get some panic in the ticks and trend on Friday's close, and I did, uh, on Friday, we had a close on the trend of 2.5, and we had a 4 and 33 down tick reading. Well, that's a bullish combination, suggests a low of as early as that day of the reading to as late as two days later, which will be today. And so I'm thinking today is probably the low. Uh, that we can go through that, and I'll, I'll show you my analysis. But, you know, I'll start with chart one. Give me one second to get it up. All right. Let's see here. <clears throat> All right, we have chart one up. This is SPX. Right, it's the SPX, and it's actually a monthly chart. And I don't know, before the last couple of weeks, I've been saying we're probably going to stall in here. And the market finally did. And the reason why is just a simple method of anyhow the middle, the second window, or yeah, the second window down from the top is a monthly SPX. And every time you get the trading range, uh, how you pronounce this, see, uh, if you get 50% of the trading range above the upper Bollinger Band on a monthly time frame, usually the next month is consolidation. We actually had that, it looked like uh, February didn't quite do it, and I was kind of looking at it, but eight, or, uh, March we did. We closed more than 50% above the trading range, above the middle Mulder band, suggesting that April could see a consolidation. And that's the reason why I kind of got out of the market and waited for that consolidation. So now we're consolidating, so where are we going to go from here? Let's go to page two. All right, give me a second. Or chart two. All right, we have, uh, give me one second, actually. That is chart three. Well, let's see, chart three. Um, I see, that's my fault. Let's get it out. This is chart two right now. All right. Perfect, got it up. All right, chart two, this is a weekly uh, SPX middle window, and the window below that is the XP, XPX VIX ratio. And the only thing I want to point out on this, this is a weekly time frame. As the market goes up and the SPX VIX ratio, which is a window below the SPX, and if it makes lower highs as the SPX makes higher highs, that's an intermediate term bearish sign. And all the pink areas identify those times where the market went up and that ratio would made higher or lower highs, where the S&Ps made higher highs. Over the last, um, I don't know, several months, the SP is making higher highs, and that ratio is also making higher highs. We did have a pullback here, uh, but I don't think there's anything meaningful. The reason why the VIX never responded, really, until the market really went down, it didn't respond going up into the high. It stayed uh, making higher highs as the SPs were making higher highs. Now we got a pullback. Well, the VIX does go down when the market, uh, or the VIX does go up when the market goes down, and that's what we're going uh, going right now. And so if, let's say the market makes a higher high here and the SPX VIX ratio makes a lower high, then that's something to worry about. But that we don't, that hasn't happened yet because the S&P has not made a higher high. So that's something worth watching as we go forward here. But I do think we're, 
on an intermittent term scale here, there's nothing to really worry about. There's not anything that's jumping out at me that this is a major top and we're going to go down and and split in half the market. Nothing like that. Matter of fact, uh, as we get going here, I'm probably saying they're probably making a load today. So let's go to chart three. Okay. We're up. All right, it's chart three. The bottom window is the... Uh, uh, NYSE advancing issues divided by the NYSE total issues, and you take a 10-day average of that. And what you're going to come up with uh, is, a, is a zwag breast thrust indicator, and that is when the readings hit below uh, 0.4, which we did yesterday. We hit 0.35 on the close, and if that market, and if if this uh, ratio analysis, this the NYSE advanced. Uh, divided by the total, and to take a 10-day average of that, if that reaches 0.6 within the next 10 days, they call that a zwag breast thrust indicator and suggest a bull move in the market's coming. So in the next 10 days, we get a reading about 0.6, uh, then I think we'll have a, a rally that's similar that was started last October, uh, pretty much straight up again. So I think this is just a minor sideways pattern. It hasn't happened yet, but this next rally in the next 10 days, which is basically two weeks from today, if we're at 0.6 or higher, then we're going to have a, a real significant move coming over the summer. So we'll have to wait and see if that develops, but I'm just putting that out right now, something I'll be watching for, because we did get the oversold condition. Now we need to get to, to 0.6 to see if that happens in the next 10 days. Um, I think the market actually has capabilities of doing that. We'll have to wait and see, though. Let's move on to I chart see. four. Okay. Yep, I have chart four up now. Uh, chart four, this is the um, uh, second window up from the bottom uh. is the SPX VIX ratio again. And every time you get below the lower Bollinger Band, which we did yesterday, and the last time we did that, came at the October low, and the time before that, uh, there was a minor low in 2000, October 2000, looked like 21. Uh, but anyhow, when the, when that ratio gets way below its lower Bollinger Band, you're always looking for a low. So we're probably in the vicinity of a low according to the VIX type indicators. So that's one reason why I'm bullish here. Uh, yeah, we got the sound coming on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I, I want to talk a little bit more on chart form when we get back. Um, you know, right now we're trading the S Mini at 5101. Let's see what we get when we uh, come back. Tim, stay right there. Welcome back, folks. We're here with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, before we went to the break, we were talking about uh, some potential botany bottoming patterns in the SPX. You know, work on the diction. Uh, Tim Ord, are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Fantastic. Here. So we're on chart four right now. Right. Chart four. Uh, basically, if you look at the bottom window, it's, it's, I put a Bollinger Band on the VIX, mm -hmm. and any time you get above the upper Bollinger Band or actually below the Bollinger Band on a closing basis, the market is going to reverse. And that's what we had yesterday. You can look over to the prior right window. You can see you're above the upper or the upper Bollinger Band on the SPX VIX ratio since it flips it upside down. Right. You're below it. So, you know, it, what happens, you gone down too fast. So I do a lot of stuff with the VIX because it really gives a good indicator. If it goes too fast one direction, a lot of times re reverse. So the other, uh, let's go to chart five, and I do it some other ways too. I, I, I measure the acceleration of the VIX in like three different ways. Uh, the top window is the VIX, next window down is the SPX. Uh, or the SPY. Next window down is percent B for the uh, VIX. Mm -hmm. And the next window down below that is the rate of change of the VIX. And the bottom window is the RSI for the VIX. So what that what those three indicators do is measure the velocity of the VIX. So if it kind of just gradually goes up, usually that's a death sign for the market. If it just rockets up, it just it's got up too fast, too quick, and it's going to reverse. And I got circled uh, three, uh, uh, those three indicators I have circled, and they all reached, you only need two out of three, but all three reached, uh, um, I guess, bullish levels on yesterday's close. 
So they all kind of, the VIX just went up too fast. It actually kind of surprised me yesterday was down. But it does, the market does what it does. But this is another indicator that so you're probably at a low here, um, um, you know, today. So let's, let's go down to it. Yeah. So there's multiple indicators yeah. essentially suggesting that we might be making a bottom at this level. Yeah, we're, we are making a bottom at this level. Yeah. So the, uh, I do a lot of stuff with the VIX. So let's go down to the daily charts and really get down to the nitty gritty. And um, the bottom window is just the five day arms that uh, yesterday reached 1.2. And the next window up is the VIX. You can see a lot easier there where the VIX closed, you know, 50% of its trading range closed above the upper Bollinger Band yesterday. And that's a, a sign. And also, if you look at the volume, which is the next window up, this is a volume of the SPY. We broke below the previous low. If you see those blue circles on the SPY, or the blue circles on the volume issue. The previous low, that was back on March 15th. I have it circled in blue there. And that was the last low. We broke that low yesterday, and I didn't do the exact calculations, but you broke that previous low about 15% lighter volume. If you break it on equal or greater volume, that means the decline is uh, it's going to keep going. In other words, that is a legitimate break to the downside. If you break it on 10% or lighter volume, that means a false break to the downside. So we have a false break to the downside, and so that means at some point we're going to reverse back upside, the, reverse back upside again. And today, if you look at volume right now, uh, this chart is several hours old, but volume is going to come in at least 20% lighter than yesterday. So the market really doesn't have energy to push below yesterday's low. It's trying to do it, but you need at least equal volume yesterday to push below yesterday's low. We're not going to anywhere be near it. And when I made this chart, the trend was 1.61. And right now we're at 1.43. Anything below, uh, anything above 1.2 is bullish. So you're probably making a low. If the market can't take out the previous low with volume, which is yesterday's low, it'll, at least it'll reverse, take out the previous high, which is yesterday's high. So that'd be the minimum. But if you close above yesterday's high, you also close above the March 15th um, previous low. Which is, a, I hope I'm getting not too confusing here. No, but no. the March 15th low, if you close above that low, it gives the previous high back at the, uh, you know, all, looks like about 524 up there. So um, I hope that's getting not too confusing here. I'm probably going too fast, but there's a lot of things to it. And you also, if you look, I got the Bollinger's band on the SPY there, if you see that. Yep. And. If you if you notice, we closed below that Bollinger Band uh, yesterday, also, which is another kind of exhaust move to the downside. Mm. So we're not going to go lower here. We're making a bottom. Uh, if we're going to go lower, today's volume should be at least equal to yesterday's volume. But we're not even going to come close to that. Sure. So uh, I'd say expiration week, which is this week, is going to be an up week. Will we get back to the old highs? I don't know if we got enough time to do that. But at a minimum, we get back to yesterday's high. That would probably be the minimum. Uh, so then from there, we'll have to wait and see. But I think we're making a worthwhile low here. Yeah. And usually April, of all the months of the year, uh, November is the best month. The second best month is April. Uh, so we're seasonality-wise, we're in actually a, a good month. I think by the end of April, we'll be back up to the old highs, if not breaking to new highs. So there's there's not the start of a, a big decline here. There's there's enough exhaust moves to the downside to suggest we're we're making a, a minimum and a short term low. It could be an intermediate term low. It depends how the market responds over the next two weeks, and that's judged by the uh, zwag breath stress indicator. If we get above 0. 0.6, then I think we're going to have one heck of a good you know probably April, May, and June. Uh, maybe even in July, we'll have to wait and see. So uh, this is a regular kind of a consolidation or an uptrend is what, what this is all about. Well, we get down to that gap around that 500 area, according to what's going on now, I don't think so. So uh, I have that gap there. If you look at the left part of the chart on the SPYs there, I have, I have a gap label there. 
a lot of times gaps are, are get filled, and uh, maybe it will, but it might be later this year. So we'll have to wait and see. But not all gaps get filled. Some people say, yeah, all gaps get filled. They don't. So, But volume, today's volume is going to be light. I think uh, this is probably uh, uh, expiration week will be an up week. So Fantastic. we'll have to wait and see. Well, then I think we have, um, you know, we, we have a little bit left in this segment and a short one afterwards, but I see you have some stuff with gold, uh, which I personally right. am interested in. See where you're looking at it. Uh, of course, I was saying at the beginning of the show, Citigroup had increased its target, uh, at least in 2025, at around 2,800. Uh, so I'm curious to see what you kind of have looking at uh, gold. Okay. Uh, uh, do we got time to start covering it now? What, 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 We've about 20 seconds right now, this? and then when we get back from the break, we'll have about three minutes. Um, okay. So what do we have? The so weekly GDX and then the other one, right. Well, yeah, why don't, why don't we okay. just start talking a little bit about uh, 7? We can talk a little bit when the uh, music begins as well. So. Okay, so we want to start now? Well... <laughs> I think the music is about to start right now. So you stay right there. Folks, we'll be right back with Tim right. Gordon. We'll talk a little bit about gold uh, when we come back from the break. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup with Tim Ord. Before we went to the break, uh, starting to look at gold. We have a short segment. Gold is currently uh, trading at 2,406. Uh, kind of want to see what you're looking at with it there, Tim. All right. As far as uh, uh, this, this chart number seven, yep. uh, the bottom window is the uh Cumulative advanced decline on the weekly time frame. Next window up is a cumulative advanced, or, or excuse me, the bottom window is a cumulative up down volume on the weekly time frame. The next window up is a cumulative advanced decline for GDX. It needs to close above the mid Bollinger band. And as of today, this week's not over yet, but as of today, we're above that mid Bollinger band. So if this actually gives a signal, a lot of these signals last a you know, year or one and a half years, sometimes even longer. The last signal was generated was back in January 2021, pretty much stayed on a sell signal until right now. So if, if this, if the market can remain, you know, sideways or higher here this week, that that's buy signal will remain in force. Uh, so let's, let's see where we are right now on a daily part. That's good chart eight. All right. And, uh, uh, this this just measures uh, it's the bottom window is just the 18 day average of the up down volume. Next window higher is the 18 day average of the advanced decline. So it's like three a little over three weeks of data. So buy signals occur, which is basically a blue area on the chart, when both those indicators are above minus 10. As long as those two indicators stay above minus 10, the uptrend's intact. What I'm thinking is going on here is a five-way count up. So we're pretty much high. We're up around plus 10 on both of them in that vicinity. So this is not really even getting close to a sell signal. But I think an Elliott Wave uh, five patterns up. We're in wave four right now. That's on the GDX chart. I got it marked. So I think five wave is to come probably in the next several days. So that's my view. Fantastic. Tim, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, you will be on Thursday as well with Tom, and we're really looking forward to that. So, All right. Guys, Talk that was Tim then. Ord of the OrdOracle.com, Ord-Oracle. Check it out. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we will have Tom on tomorrow, which you definitely don't want to miss because we have a special guest, and we have usual programming uh, throughout the rest of the day. Thank you very much.